Welcome to the video. In this video we're going to be taking a look at updating the firmware on this radio here. Now this is a radio that we've already had a look at in another couple of videos and we're using it as part of a build for a quadcopter and that series is called Quadcopter Building for Beginners and you can also go and watch it there. Now as part of the setup one of the things that we were talking about was the fact that some of the features in this radio are quite basic but sometimes not having loads of extra features can be great for a first time builder because it isn't overwhelming. Now normally on a radio there are extra greeblies and things on the front of it for things like trim and all of that on here is done through this touch screen. There has been a new firmware update available for Flysky for this radio and I need to say a very big thank you to a gentleman called Seven who works at Banggood.com who let me know that this firmware was about and also provided me with a link. So if you are interested in this I'll put a link in the description from where you can get the firmware from and I'll explain what the new pieces are because it looks like it's going to be worthwhile doing the upgrade. Now I'm going to film the upgrade as I do it. So I've never done this before, this is the first time. So if there are any hiccups or problems, it will be in the video, but it'll mean that you can follow along if you want to put the upgrade onto your Flysky FSI6S and get the new features. It's going to be worthwhile me explaining what the new features allegedly are that we're gonna get by putting the firmware onto this radio. So let's put a little slide up here and I'll quickly go through what the release notes say. First things are we're going to get some really important functions on the radio that I have missed as I've been setting it up. And those are new options for the trims, for setting rate and exponential. Now exponential is something that allows you to deaden the sticks around the middle position. We actually have a video that talks all about what is dual rates and what is exponential so if you're interested you can go and watch that but adding it here is going to be great particularly around the aileron elevator and rudder because it means we can deaden the sticks around the middle position and that makes it easier for a new pilot to fly and in fact there are loads of us myself included that still has a little bit of expo on the radio just to make things nicer and less sensitive around mid stick so you can maintain hovers and hover points with better accuracy. We're going to get a throttle curve, which is really handy. So normally on a radio like this, the way it is with the current firmware, is uh, we did another video where we actually got rid of the spring on the throttle. So our throttle now stays in position. Uh, by default, the throttle actually jumps to 50%, which in my opinion is one of the only real downsides with this little cheap and cheerful radio. So we did another video where we actually upgraded the radio or change the radio and took that spring out. Now the throttle normally goes from 0 to 100% but having a throttle curve allows you to flatten the throttle curve around the hover point to give you again finer control when you're flying the model and I tend to for the bigger models in particular have that set so that I can really tightly control the hover and the position in the sky in all three dimensions. There's also a new throttle mode, there's a new five mode group, a uh, context aware reset function, no idea what that is but we'll look at it once we've done it, and a new low signal alarm function. Now to do this we're going to have to download the application, the application comes with the pieces that we're going to need, there's a USB port at the bottom here of the radio that we're going to have to plug it into the PC with, start the application and then go through the process and we'll do that together in a moment and then once you've done that you do have to recalibrate the sticks on the radio by going into a specific piece and then unfortunately you will have to rebind the radio back to the receiver as well because it sounds like it's, it blows its mind completely but I think it's going to be worth it to get access to these new things particularly the new rate and exponential settings and the ability to have a throttle curve on here which will make this a much more useful radio. So enough talking, let's clear the decks off and we'll come back with the little laptop set up um, and I'll show you the files and then we'll get ready to flash the firmware. So we've downloaded the zip file that we have in the link in the description and in that zip file is only two things. The first is a Word document that goes through the upgrade and calibration process. The second is the actual executable itself. Now here is the radio sat on the desktop. We have got it powered but if we open this Word document we should see the process that we've got to go through. So it takes us through both parts of the process. The first is the upgrade process itself, where we're going to connect to the transmitter, the USB cable, enter the setup menu. I'm guessing that means then uh, we've got to turn it on first, but we'll 
find out and then we have the calibration process so this is all documented here on the laptop on uh, in word uh, so we're going to follow that in the next five minutes to do the update the next one then is the update firmware so the first thing before I double click this I'm going to um, connect the transmitter to the computer using the USB cable now I've not ever connected the transmitter before so this is first time and we're not getting anything coming on so it looks like we've got to power the radio on first so let me hold both buttons down there's a little happy noise and we're going to plug in our USB cable that it sounds more like it the computers just made that happy little I found something new noise now we're going to double click on the update firmware executable that we came as part of the zip file and we'll see if we can get this all to work now we're going to have to go into a menu here on the radio as well so we're going to go down into firmware update this will enter firmware update mode and halt other functions. That is absolutely fine. I'm going to hit continue. And now on the computer, we can see that we can actually see something. So we're going to select it. It says ready for update for software version 1.0.8, hardware version 1.00. Okay, so we are going to click update. And now it says programming the flash. This is not taking too long actually so this is promising update was successful wow okay the radio has now rebooted that looks really good so we're going to close that out next thing we need to do then is we'll unplug the USB cable from the transmitter we don't need the PC anymore and what we'll do then is we'll now go into the calibration. So the next thing we need to do then is calibrate the sticks. So let's click on the menu. And now actually we have this ability here to go into the function menu and the system menu. That's new, that wasn't there before. So the function menu is all the things to do with the model and transmitter uh, receiver that we're using here. So that's all the stuff. And again, we've got things like rate and expo and throttle curve here that we didn't have before. So that's pro looking promising. But if we click on Sys, then we get a whole nother list of things that are all kind of system functions. Receiver, my bind, actually uh, we can now have multiple models, which is exciting. We can select the output mode, stick mode, everything else. But we need to go and find the bit that says stick adjust. And what we need to do then is move both sticks up, down, left and right. So we're basically going to their maximum throws in each direction, which is what we're after. And then we need to rotate the two controls in the corners all the way as well, each side. And we need to put the sticks at the 50% position, so exactly in the middle. And then come out. Fantastic. So that should have done all of the pieces. So the last thing we need to do to make sure that it's now working and happy is we need to navigate to the channel section on the transmitter and verify that everything's happy. So let's go back, let's have a look here. So there's our throttle, channel 3. Look at that. That all looks like it's working great. Fantastic. Okay, so the other thing I've just noticed here is when you go into this now, we can see the transmitter value in the sensors is already there too. So now we've gone through and we've updated the firmware, let's have a look at some of the new functions. So we're going to go into the menu again, and here we're going to get, make sure we're in the function menu, not the system menu. We have reverse and end points that we had before, sub trim we had, and trims we uh, didn't have before. We only had one lot of trim menus, not sub trim and trims. We have the rate and exponential, so let's have a look at that. Cool, so we can actually decide how we want it to work, whether or not we're going to reduce the throws, and we can also add exponential as well. So normally I would add a little bit of expo on the elevator, aileron and rudder. We now have a throttle curve, 
So it looks like a very simple five point throttle curve, but I like it because normally the way I do it is I increase, get my hand out of the way, and decrease the throttle curve around the middle and that then means that there's a flatter curve in terms of hovering as well. So that it works and actually I like the uh, additional things that it gives you here. It's going to make this a far more useful radio. So again the process is you need to download the firmware linked in the description then you need to put that onto a Windows PC you need to turn the radio on, connect it up to the PC, go into the firmware update menu in here then double click in the application and click update and then you can come back and go through the calibration routine. Remember though, unfortunately, it has forgot all of the settings that you had before, so you will have to go through, rebind your receiver, reset everything up, but I would say this is a worthwhile firmware upgrade to go to to get those extra functions. Thanks again to Seven of Banggood for pointing this out to me, and hopefully that helps those of you that have this radio that have wished that you had those extra functions. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.